What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing, the Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuffs series. I'll continue my conversation with you concerning the complete history of boxing. This will be my last video showing the images of my scrapbook. Does not seem to be a popular item as an image related to conversations when I'm speaking of boxing. I have to respect my audience. It becomes annoying when you have to constantly ask for thumbs up. And that's not something that I normally do. We all understand how the algorithm works. Any video that I watch, whether I know who the person is or not, I put the thumbs up before I even watch the video. I was watching a documentary on Joe Lewis. It was a great documentary up until the point when I saw many images of my scrapbook that was on that documentary. It was obviously pulled and downloaded and uploaded to their platform. There's a lot of people who download my videos and they'll upload it to theirs and they'll constantly watch and rewatch, but I get no credit for the visuals. The bottom line is, at the age of seven, I've been doing this. I didn't have mad magazines or baseball cards or comic books. This is what I did. And met hundreds and hundreds of ex-fighters. So when I upload a video, it's with passion. When I speak, it's with passion. When I show you images, it's with passion. It's raw and uncut. Nothing pulled from the internet. No editing. I just show you what I have and I discuss it in format. But I have to respect the results of what the members of the audience want. So I will discuss boxing and give you further detail and descriptions of what I'm speaking of moving forward. Azar Mac Charles is the fighter that we will be discussing today. He's from Cincinnati, Ohio. He was known as the Cincinnati Cobra. He was born July 7th, 1921 at Lawrence, Georgia. He would pass through Cincinnati, Ohio. He would die May 28th, 1975 in Chicago, Illinois. Chicago has always been a moment with me when it came to Izzard Charles. Like I said, he died May 28, 1975 in Chicago, but he would have a moment in his career. In 1948, in 10 rounds, when he would take on a, a fellow fighter of Ohio, his name was Sam Baruti. He would hit him with a right hand and Baruti would go down. He would count himself out as the referee was counting him out. The nerves had taken over the mindset of Sam Baruti. And he would be pronounced dead in Cook County Hospital. Now, my dad knew Sam Baruti. His locker was two lockers away from Sam Baruti in Stillman's gym. And he would tell me many stories about Sam Baruti. And I'll share some of those stories with you either in this video or if I need a part two to this video, you'll see it then. As a Charles was staying six foot, he had a 73 inch reach, he had a record of 121 bouts, 95 wins, 52 knockouts, 25 losses, and one draw. As an amateur, he was 42 and 0, and fought from 1937 to 1939. He would fight in the Cincinnati Golden Gloves in the Ohio District AAU Championships, the National Amateur Athletic Union Championships, the Diamond Belt Welterweight Championship Contest from 1937 to 1938. The State Amateur Athletic Union Welterweight Championship Contest, 1937-1938. Chicago Do Golden Gloves Welterweight Championships in 1938. What a year 1938 was. Diamond Belt Middleweight Championship from 1939. The Golden Gloves Middleweight Championships in 1939. And the State Amateur Athletic Union Middleweight Championship in 1939. As an amateur, Ezra Charles couldn't miss. He was the best of the best in the time in which he came. As a professional... He would fight from March 12, 1940. 1940 was one of the greatest years for fighters who would turn professional, such as Ike Williams and Willie Pep. 
Ray Robinson, and Cleo Shane. Jake Lamato, although he would have his first bout in 1941, but he would begin in 1940 as a professional. Ezra Charles would have 19 years in the game as a professional. He would fight the likes of Jimmy Bivens and Joey Maxim, Booker Beckworth and Archie Moore, fought Moore twice, fought Moore three times, Charlie Burley twice, just Joe Walcott four times, Teddy Uroth, Joe Baskey, Lee Omar and Rex Lane, Nino Valdez and Howard Johnson, Tommy Hurricane Jackson and Johnny Holman, Gus Lesnovich, Rocky Marciano twice in 1954, Pat Valentino, you name them. Ezra Charles was in the ring with them. He fought a fighter by the name of Charlie Norcus. Charlie Norcus was in the ring with a light heavyweight. And this light heavyweight would be the first fighter to knock down Jake Lamada. He would stop him. His name was Danny Nardico. And Charlie Norcus would face Danny Nardico, excuse me, twice. The first fight is what brought on the second fight. More than seven knockdowns between the two. What a hell of a fight that was. Ezra Charles would be in the ring with Jimmy Bivens on the night of January 7th, 1943. He would defeat, Jimmy Bivens would defeat Ezra Charles in Cleveland, Ohio, in 10 rounds. November 12th, 1946, Ezra Charles would defeat Jimmy Bivens, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in 10 rounds. Ezra Charles weighed 175 and Jimmy Bivens weighed 186. Ten rounds unanimous decision. The referee was Ernie Sesto. And they would draw a gate of $22,376.51. March 10th, 1947. Ezra Charles would knock out Jimmy Bivens in Cleveland, Ohio. Charles weighed 175. Bivens weighed 186. It was in front of 4,791 spectators. The referee was Ernie Sesto. And they would combine a gate of $22,376. September 13th, 1948, Ezra Charles would defeat Jimmy Bivens in Washington, D.C. Ten rounds. Ezra Charles lost five rounds due to low blows. But he would still come up with the victory. November 26, 1952, Ezra Charles defeated Jimmy Bivens in Chicago, Illinois. Ten rounds. Charles weighed 185 and Bivens weighed 183. It would be a ten-round unanimous decision in front of 2,799 spectators. Now, Charles and Bivens both lived in Ohio. Both these men would turn professional in 1940. Those Ohio boys were something else. Ezzie Charles, Sam Baruti, Jimmy Bivens, I mean, Joey Maxim, you name him. Harry Bobo. Very good heavyweights of Ohio. And they would mix it up, for sure. Now, Jimmy Bivens, his name was James Lewis Bivens. He was born December 6, 1919, in Dry Branch, Georgia. He died July 4th, 2012, he was 92 years of age at the time of his death and he would reside in Cleveland, Ohio. I had the pleasure of meeting Jimmy Bivens. He was Doration light heavyweight and Doration heavyweight champion. He would take on Nino Valdez. He would take on Milo Batina twice, 1943-1945. Bob Baker in 51, Tommy Harrison in 52. Lisa Void in 42, Curtis the Hatcher Man Shepherd in 45 and 47, Joey Maxim in 42 and 48, but he would fight Joey Maxim three times, Bob Pastor in 42, he'd be in the ring with Ezra Charles several times, Lloyd Marshall in 43, Tammy Mariello, Gus Lesnavich, Leonard Marrow, and Clarence Henry, Willie Bean, Coley Wallace, Nate Bolden, and Archie Moore, Lee Q. Murray, and Watson Jones, Booker Beckworth, and Buddy Knox, Aaron Wilson, Tony Musto, Judge Joe Walcott, Sid Peaks, Charlie Burley, and Tommy Harrison, Lou Franklin, 
Billy Seuss. Lisa Voigt. What a fighter was Jimmy Bivens. Is it Charles known as the Cincinnati Cobra? Would take on Charlie Burley, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. June 29th, 1942. 4,200 members in the audience, they show up. At the Hickory Park in Melville, Pennsylvania. The referee was Red Robinson. He awards the 10 round decision. There's our Charles, who's 20 years old, an amateur sensation of Cincinnati, Ohio. Weighed 161 pounds. He was a prospect and a contender. Nine pounds over the weight of Charlie Burley, who weighed 151. There's a Charles would defeat Charlie Burley in 10 rounds. At the Forbes Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The referee was Buck McTyler. He raised the hand of the Cincinnati Cobra, who weighed 162. He's a five to nine favorite. He's a middleweight, master boxer. 12,134 members of the audience. They paid $31,686.50 to watch their hometown hero. Fight a 155 pound fighter. Charlie Brill was an outstanding fighter. And I had the pleasure of meeting Charlie Burley. He was a very modest man, if you will. As I speak with you, I get chills for the times that I had with some of these fighters. Jimmy Bivens fought world champions, such as Milo Patino. He was a five foot ten southpaw, world light heavyweight champion. He defeated Tiger Jack Fox between February 3rd, 1931, July 13th, 1939. Billy Khan. He would lose his title to Khan, and Khan would unify the division. Gus Lesnar bench, March 11th, 1942, 10-round win in Cleveland, Ohio. Archie Moore, August 22nd, 1945, six-round knockout in Cleveland, Ohio. September 8th, 1947, KO by nine rounds in Baltimore. June 28th, 1948, 10 rounds. We lose in Baltimore. September 11th, 1949, he would take on Lisa Void. November 27th, 1942, 10 rounds in New York. Billy Seuss, January 13th, 1942, 10 rounds. He would win in Cleveland, Ohio. Jersey Joe Walcott, February 25th, 1946, 10 rounds. He would lose in Cleveland, Ohio. Ezra Charles, January 7th, 1943. He would lose 10 rounds in Cleveland, Ohio. November 12th, 1946. He would lose 10 rounds in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. March 10th, 19. 48. He'd be stopped in four rounds in Cleveland. In 1947, 1947. September 13th, 1948. He would lose 10 rounds in Washington, D.C. November 26th, 1952. 10 rounds. He would lose Chicago, Illinois. World Colored Champions, Charlie Burley. Lloyd Marshall, March 8th, 1943, 13th round, knockout in Cleveland, Ohio. Those would be the fighters that Jimmy Bivens would be in the ring with. Now, Ezra Charles would face Archie Moore, May 5th, 1947, at the Music Hall Arena in Cincinnati, Ohio. The referee was Tony Warnoff. He awards as a Charles 10 round decision. Charles weighed 173 pounds and Archie Moore weighed 172 pounds. As a Charles explodes the body work and puts down Archie Moore with a beautiful left hook to the body. Chapter four, nine count. 
in round number seven. And Archie Moore was displaying the crab-like defense and as he charged we get underneath it with a left hook. Well timed. And down went Moore. In front of 4,502 spectators, they paid a combined gate of $23,281.50. And these men would give their fight fans their money's worth. Moore's purse was $4,547.95. Charles' purse was $5,400. And fifty-seven dollars and fifty-four cents for the World Light Heavyweight Championship. Seventy-five thousand dollars was offered to Gus Lesnovich. He wasn't interested. As it Charles defeats Ancient Archie Moore for the third and final time, January thirteenth, nineteen forty-eight, in Cleveland Arena in Fort Ohio. The referee was Jackie Davis. Once again, awards Charles the victory via two minute and 50 second knockout in the eighth round. Both men split two rounds apiece, and Charles would win the final three rounds. Moore goes down in the eighth round. He struggles to grab the strands to hoist himself up, unable to beat the count, and he is counted out. In front of 8,334 spectators, they were collectively paid $38,920 for that contest. Both men began their first four years as a professional, as a middleweight. They were ranked number one and number two in 1944. More for front excuse me, fought from 1936 to 1944 as a middleweight. Charles fought from 1940 to 1944 as a middleweight. And as the Charles defeats Jersey Joe Walcott in 15 rounds, June 22nd, 1949 at Comiskey Park in Chicago, Illinois, the referee was Dave Miller. He had a 7-7 to 73. Watch you more. We're fighting for the vacant NBA version of the World Heavyweight Championship crown that was vacated by a 25 title defense, 12 year reign, undisputed, undefeated heavyweight champion, the Brown Bomber, Joe Lewis, in front of a crowd of 25,932 spectators. They collectively paid $246,546 that evening. Walcott weighed 196 pounds and Charles weighed 182 pounds. Charles defeats Walcott for the second time, March 2nd, 1952, at the Olympic Stadium in Detroit, Michigan. 15 rounds. Referee was Gilmore Rosen. And I have to say, These two men would put on a performance of a lifetime. It would be Ezra Charles' first defense of Joe Walcott, third defense of the New York Sack, first defense of the NBA. It was a fascinating contest. Seventh defense of the NBA and the third defense of the New York SAC. Wow. Jersey Joe Walcott defeats Ezzy Charles via seventh round knockout, scheduled for 15, July 18, 1951, at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And Charles was making a defense of his fifth title reign, New York sack title of it, ninth defense of his NBA, and it came up short. It was met by a polarizing left hook by Judge Joe Walcott in front of 28,272 
spectators who would pay $245,000 at Forbes Field. This was the first World Heavyweight Championship contest that took place in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh to be exact. 37-year-old Joe Walcott will crank a left hook, 45-degree angle, to the right portion of the jawbone of his Charles. Left him staggering. He would do a backflip and attempt to get up. He was not in any position to continue the fight. Both men would meet for the fourth time and it would be their last contest with one another. An all first black fight cast would show up as he Charles and Judge Joe Walcott, who was 38 by the way, referee was Zach Clayton. And this would be the first time a black referee and two black fighters would fight in a World Heavyweight Championship contest. That has never happened before. Ezra Charles and Joe Walcott would know each other better than themselves. Now I just show you this book once before, but I'm going to show you images of Jimmy Bivens, and I did explain to you this would be the last video that I show my scrapbooks on. This is Jimmy Bivens. Excuse the blur. Let's get this focus right. New York, November 27th of 1942. An about which crowded most of its mere action. Into the last two rounds, Jimmy Bivens of Cleveland and I'll say Ohio, heavyweight, celebrated his Eastern debut by taking a 10 round decision over Lee Savoy and Patterson, New Jersey, Madison Square Garden tonight. Bivens weighed 175 and a half pounds and Savoy weighed 195 pounds. There were no knockdowns. And the action was, for the most part, so slow that the drowsing customers awakened only periodically. Excuse the blur. To boo and clap. This is just an article of the fight between Lisa Void and Jimmy Bivens. I don't know why I can't get this to clear up. Let's look at another article. Once again, Bivens earns nod over Lisa Void and Tam Scrap, New York, November 27th of 1942. Bout which crowded, bout which crowded most of its mirror action into the last two rounds. Jimmy Bivens of Cleveland, Ohio, of, of uh, I'll say Ohio, heavyweight celebrated the Eastern debut. Once again, Bivens beats Savoy and Garden Battle by Jeff Smith. Bivens, Jimmy Bivens, Cleveland Sensation, Battler, adds a void from Patterson as a heavyweight to his growing list and it just goes on to talk about the weight, it goes on to talk about the bout contest as is and it's a round by round breakdown of the fight. My issue is I can't get this to stay clear. I want to give a shout out to who I consider a friend. His name is Jerry Fitch. Jerry Fitch is an author of seven books that is related to Cleveland, Ohio. And he put out a book. In fact, I'll show you the cover of a book. Let me show you the cover. 
because I have a lot of respect for Jerry Fitch. Look up Jerry Fitch. Oh, I, can, I can't get this to focus. This is crazy. All right, let me show you the cover of a book that I'm, uh, I'm very proud to own from Jerry Fitch. I got seven books from him. Let me show you the cover of the book. When you get a chance, try and pick up this book. You can reach out to Jerry Fitch personally. This is the man who would be champion by Jerry Fitch. Stand up gentleman. Has his own street now and well deserved. Shout out to Jerry Fitch. Once again, Bivens out points Lee Savoy at the Garden, November 27th of 42. And I have a lot of articles of Jimmy Bivens. There's 8,000 in the crowd. Bivens weighed 175 and a half, according to the article. Savoy weighed 195. Here you have Bivens retains the duration title, completely outfighting Patina, Milo Patina. Milo Patina, like I said, he would become the champion. He was a southpaw when he would face Tiger Jack Fox and he would lose the title when Billy Carmel unified against him. Bivens beats Patina in Ohio ring, 14,940 in Cleveland, Ohio. Bivens beats Greek rival. Cleveland, February 24th. The matchmaker Larry Atkins. Light heavyweight dual racing champion by decisioning Anton Christopherides in 15 rounds. He fought Anton Christopherides twice. Oh, boy. Let me get this. All right, I'm going to end this video. Let me see if I can get another article of Jimmy Bivens. I have tons and tons of articles of Jimmy Bivens. Bivens Annex Duration Title, Cleveland, 1943. Anton Christopherides of Geneva. Autumn Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fistic of Series. All great fighters and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Jimmy Bivens, Los Angeles, April 7th. He would take on Jones. And he would defeat Jones. All right, thanks for watching. Be well. Once again, this will be my last scrapbook video, so you won't have to worry about this blur. If you feel this is something you're interested in, you have to let me know. Otherwise, this will be the last one. Wait, wait, wait. Let me fix this. Hold on. Okay. All right, take care. Peace. That's all, Charles.